All righty. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the first event in our Living at UHart series. My name is Nate. I'm one of the assistant directors of admission here at the university. Uh, and I'm really, really excited about the program we're able to bring you folks tonight. It's going to give you a nice inside look at a lot of our, our residence halls, both of our first year residence halls and one of our upperclassmen op options for students. Um, we will have a Q&A open up at the end. I know a lot of you also pose some questions as a part of the registration form. Uh, we're going to get to as many of them as possible. The plan is for this program to run about an hour. Um, so as we get closer to that hour mark, um, if questions are still filling in, uh, we will be able to run over a little bit. Um, so don't, don't be afraid to ask any questions you guys have that come up throughout the presentation. Um, and thanks for joining us. Uh, so I'm just going to start off with a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, for everybody, I know there's some common questions. Uh, there's the elephant in the room of when is the housing application going to open? Uh, and the good news is that it opened yesterday. So the housing application is now open for anybody who is interested in, in completing that. You do have to be a deposited student to complete the housing application and you will get an email to your University of Hartford email address uh, to complete that application. There are some questions that were posed as a part of the registration that quite frankly, we just don't have answers to yet. Um, so rather than us trying to, you know, dance around the line and, and give you some information without giving you information, I'm going to defer some of those questions to our Living at UHart series that's hosted by the Office of Residential Life. Uh, and that's, that event is going to be on April 12th. Uh, so keep your eye out for the registration for that if you haven't registered for it already. Um, but take a peek uh, and hopefully join that. I'm actually going to stop screen sharing so you guys can see me a little bit better. Um, otherwise, um, Again, I, I want to reiterate that you do have to be deposited to complete that housing application. Um, so if you're interested in doing that and getting through that process, um, which we are going to touch on a little bit more throughout this event, uh, please make sure that you are taking a peek um, at that process and, and making that final decision on you are. Um, I will also say that the university has extended its uh, refund policy to June 1st. Um, so if you deposit to fill out the housing application and then decide you is not where you'd like to attend, you do have an opportunity to, uh, to formally uh, withdraw and request a refund. Um, hopefully we'll do a good enough job tonight where you guys will all feel super confident in your, in your decision to pick you that it really won't matter. Um, but with no further ado, we're going to kind of jump into it. Uh, the first present or present presentation we have is actually from one of our tour guys named Ryland Daly, um, who is a first year student at the University of Hartford. Uh, from New Jersey. Uh, she is actually not able to join us tonight because she has a night class. However, she was gracious enough to record uh, a little tour of her room. Uh, and we're really, really excited to show you guys this. So if you have questions, again, I see them starting to filter in. Um, please feel free to, to, to drop those in the Q&A. We do have some additional staff here that are going to help answer some of those questions throughout the event. Um, and then we obviously have some students for some student perspective uh, responses as well. So with no further ado, here is Rylan Daly uh, talking about her residence hall in Hawk Hall. Welcome to my room at Hawk Hall. So usually pre-COVID, Hawk Hall is filled with a bunch of doubles. But this year, because of COVID, they turned into super singles, which is basically a double, but with one person living. Your average setup for Hawk Hall is going to be two beds, the two desks, which I turned into one. And you are also going to get two dressers with two closet spaces. So right when you walk in, the closet spaces are going to look something like this. You're gonna get a big shelf, a hanging area, as well as a dress. This does go for every residential hall on campus, but you are allowed to bring a fridge as well as a microwave. So I have a little kitchen set up right here, as well as a curate. Your bed is also raisable, which is awesome because you're able to put a bunch of storage underneath your bed. This is my desk area. And here is a full 360 of my room. I hope you guys enjoyed my tour and I hope that gave you a little perspective of what it's like living as a freshman in the Hawk Hall at the University of Hartford. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys on campus. 
All right. So that's uh, that's step one of our tour. Uh, again, Hawk Hall is one of the two first year residence hall options at the University of Hartford. Um, so that is a space that a lot of students um, do have interest in. Uh, it is one of our smaller first year residence hall options. It's home to about 200 uh, of our first year students. And in order to apply to Hawk Hall, there is a supplementary application uh, that students will have to fill out. Kelia, before I call you in, um, she actually recorded another uh, video of some of the common spaces. Um, so I'm just going to show that one up. Uh, Hawk Hall is communal living. So it's, it's you know, corridor style ha uh, hallways. So it's one long hallway with 50 students per floor. Uh, and then there, uh, are, there are men and women's restrooms on each floor. Uh, it is a co-ed floor. So it is co-ed door to door. So the people living across from you or next door to you might identify as the opposite gender. Um, so sometimes that's something that can affect someone's decision of wanting to or not wanting to live in Hawk Hall. Um, but each floor also has some lounges and laundry rooms. So again, she recorded us a nice little video just showing us that space. So I'm going to share that one up quick and then we will move over to another residence hall. Hawk Hall also has its own laundry and lounge spaces on every single floor. The laundry room is going to look something like this. You're going to have three washers and then three dryers. Here is one of the lounge spaces in Hawk Hall on the third floor. It's a pretty large area and as you can see it's used for a lot of students to get some work done and just to chill out. All right, so that video is a, a little bit shorter, but just to give you an idea of some of those additional spaces in the residence hall, um, that we are able to show. Uh, and that's kind of the, the brief overview of Hawk Hall. Again, we're gonna touch on it a little bit more uh, as we get to the Q&A section, uh, but just so that we can make sure we're showing you guys all these different opportunities. We have Kalia in our C complex building, and she is going to show you a little bit of what your room could look like in that space. Kalia, you're muted. I don't know if you know that. Okay, well, let me restart that. <laughs> so this is what the neighborhoods look like. Every neighborhood is uh, made up of four clusters of buildings, and there is a three-step security system to get into it. So that first one is your ID card needed to get in. The second option is going to be this door right here. So you need your key to get in, and downstairs leads to your laundry rooms as well as your... Uh, study lounges and game rooms. So after getting through this door, you will see a hallway, about four to six rooms per floor. And in this building, you are actually living with on the same floor as people that identify on the same gender as you, but the floor above you may be of the opposite gender. So this is what the average hall call, hall call, the average complex room looks like. You have your closet space, an area right here where some people tend to put their uh, fridge, their microwave. You have two beds, of course. You get a bookshelf, a desk, your mirrors, and some of these buildings actually have a nice view. Then you have under there, you can also have some spaces just like in Hawk Hall. This is the average layout of the complex rooms. The only difference is what might look like uh, the closet. It could be on the opposite side or it could have curtains, just a real different setup. After you come out of your room, you do have a common area that you can decorate with your floor mates. You guys can set it up with TVs, games, video systems, anything that you want. And then right here in the middle is the bathroom. So this is what the bathroom looks like in all the complexes. You have your two showers right here, all with, with curtains. And you also have a curtain right here to cover that. You have two sinks and then you have two stalls. So you have your space, you're sharing this with about eight to 12 people depending on the floor that you live in. And you also have RAs in each of these buildings, of course. So there are two RAs that live in this building with you, one female and one male, in order to help you, in order to help you with gender respective issues. But this is really what the complexes look like. And one cool fact about it is that they actually have in-room heating and AC systems. So that is super helpful in the winter and in the fall. Awesome. Thank you, Kayla. Uh, so again, just a brief overview of what, what the complexes look like uh, for those of you who haven't been able to get to campus um, to see them yourself. Uh, we have Mary joining us from one of our village apartments, which again is one of the upperclassmen options. Um, and as soon as she's ready, we are going to turn it over to her. She's going to give you guys uh, just a, a nice brief insight into to what it's like living in one of the upperclassmen dorms. So 
Mary, I'm just gonna let you know ahead of time that you're muted as well. So you'll wanna make sure you, <laughs> you do that before we get going. <laughs> Yep, um, so where we're standing right now is in the middle of the village uh, quads. I'm in quad three, there are one through seven, um, but this is just kind of like our interior quad area. Um, then we'll kind of go up into my apartment. Um, I live on a uh, walk up, so I've got the first floor with my living room um, and second floor has the two beds. So right when you come in, you see this nice living room area. Um, you get a right as you walk in. So just like utility stuff. Mary, it looks um, like your video might have frozen. So you might want to take a okay. couple steps back. You're, you're back. <laughs> yep. <though>. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> yep. So just taking a couple steps back. Um, this is the living room area. Uh, this is our dining room area. Um, and this is kind of what you get within the quads. You get a closet um, for some utility stuff, coats, um, shoes, if you will. Then we come into our kitchen. You get a oven and a refrigerator. Any other utilities that you bring are on you. Uh, we have all this fun stuff here. Um, on the first floor, it's a half bath. So it's just a toilet and a sink, but it's pretty cute. Um, and then as well as a uh, pantry. Ours is a little smaller, but we have more cabinets um, down on the bottom in our kitchen. Um, so coming this way, uh, this is just our cute little setup. Um, our TV area, that's where I was doing the present before. Um, and then we'll go upstairs to another closet right in front of us. My other roommate's uh, room is right here. We're not going to go in there, um, but we will be able to go into my room and my other roommate. Um, Mary, it so looks like we froze again. Might okay, pausing a for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just tell me when I'm back. Yep, you are back. Okay. Um, so this is my bed um, and then my roommate's bed. They are also uh, liftable, the beds. So you can put them at ever, whatever height you need. Um, I put mine all the way up, but I'm short, so I needed a little stool. <laughs> Um, and you each get a desk and a dresser. Um, and this is just our nice view outside of our apartment. I really love the village area. It's really, really pretty. Um, and then you also get a closet for the two of you. Um, and then the upstairs bathroom um, also has a shower. So, yeah. That's about it. Awesome, thank you, Mary. Um, I am going to bring the presentation back up again so you guys don't have to look at me for this extended period here. If I can figure it out. Um, so that's, again, pretty much just a quick overview of a lot of our, our residence hall options for students. Um, the the villages are a great upperclassmen option, uh, one of the more popular ones. And then obviously we get into the first year ones, which are more pertinent to you guys with Hawk Hall and the neighborhoods. Um, we did have some questions through the registration form. So I'm going to start with some of those um, and I'm just going to kind of throw it out to some of our, our panelists that we have here. Um, so they are listed on the screen, uh, but I think I'm actually going to start by having them all introduce themselves, uh, let you guys know their names, their majors, where they're from, um, and where they live now. We'll focus on, on the res life portion of things. So Kaylee, do you wanna start? Of course. Uh, hi again, guys. My name is Kaylee White. I am a junior marketing major, and I live in Regents Park on campus. It wasn't shown today, but in my freshman year, I did live in the complexes, which is what I showed you guys. Are you wanna go next? Sure. So I know it says that I'm a junior, but I'm actually a sophomore. Um, <laughs> I'm studying architectural design and technology in the College of Engineering, Technology and Architecture. And like you just saw, I live in the village quads. Um, but yeah. <laughs> All right. And then we also have John joining us. Oh, uh, Nate, did you just want an introduction? You were just breaking up um, yep. for like the past like 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah, just saying. just your name, um, what year you are, what your major is, and then where you live right now. Uh, so my name is John. I am a psychology major uh, in my senior year. Um, I am actually from New York. 
uh, and I currently live in one of the complex uh, dorms, neighborhood dorms um, in F, F complex um, in a single. Uh, so if you still wanna live in a dorm style um, after your freshman year, you are free to do so. Or you can, of course, um, as the apartment was just shown by Mary, you can also live there as well. Awesome, thank you, John. And last but not least is Stephen Root. Hello, my name is Stephen Root and I am a senior business management major um, and I live in Park River and I am from New Jersey. Awesome. So uh, again, we, we, we're happy to have these four current students here to, to help us answer some of these questions for you. We would have loved to have Rylan who just went through the experience that you guys are going through. Um, but you know, being a student always comes first. So we wanted to make sure that we were supporting that. Um, Again, we're going to start with some of these questions that came in through the registration form. So, uh, Mary, do you mind if I call you out first uh, and have you talk a little bit about um, the housing application and then the roommate selection process? Yeah, sure. So the housing application um, and the roommate selection process are very, very simple. Um, I'll start with the roommate selection. Um, it's kind of like a dating app without the dating. You put in, um, do you like to go to bed early? Do you like to go to bed late? Do you sleep with um, like the room hot or the room cold? So just stuff that's kind of going, it's like the little things that may like make or break your roommate like connection. Um, so the system will match you with someone who's like, you're 86% compatible with Mariah Carey. You don't have to live with Mariah Carey but you can if you wanted to. Other options and some other popular ways that people find roommates um, are through Facebook groups um, for like incoming class of 2025. Um, you can find people there, you can find people through orientation. So there's tons of ways to find people other than um, the roommate selection stuff. Um, and then the housing application um, is really just where you want to live. So um, for as a freshman, you have two choices. Um, you can live in the neighborhoods, um, which is where Kaylee showed, or you can live in Hawk Hall, which is where Rylan was showing. Um, the difference between the two of those is that Hawk Hall is an apply into building. Um, so that basically just means, and it's a residential learning community building. So there are certain communities within um, the building that um, just make it a little bit different of experience than in the neighborhoods. Um, so you basically write a 300 word essay, a paragraph really about why you want to be in the specific RLC that you're applying into. Um, and then it'll go through, uh, the different resident directors in the area and they just kind of go through the, uh, essays. Um, and then they'll either accept, and I've never seen anyone really denied, but waitlisted maybe. Um, and then they go through that and you can either if you're in Hawk Hall, you have to choose a roommate that's living in the same RLC with you. Um, and then if you're in the neighborhoods, you can choose any freshman roommate at the university. Um, there's no real um, limitations there. So that's a little bit different um, than with Hawk Hall. So you could be in Hawk Hall. We have um, some RLCs that we have are the STEM C RLC um, or the Creative Arts RLC, just to name two. Um, so I was in the STEM CRLC in my freshman year, and I lived with a lot of other engineers and architects and um, physical therapy majors, but with living in the neighborhoods, you get a more diverse cast of friends. Um, so you could be an engineer living with an art student. So there's just the differences there um, in terms of the two different places that you can live. Thanks, Mary. We got a question come in uh, here that I'd like for you to piggyback off. Um, when the roommate selection applications, do you get notified who they are and how to contact them? So I know you mentioned if you match with Mariah Carey, you can choose to live with Mariah Carey. Um, is there an opportunity for you to get in contact with her before? Yeah. Maybe ask for so, an autograph? Or? <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't know if Mariah Carey would give you her autograph, but you are connected with them via their university email. Um, so when you become a, a student here at the university, you're going to get an email and it's usually like the first letter of your first name and your full last name. Um, so it's super simple to find people that way. Um, so just general practice, I would uh, introduce myself to Mariah Carey, like, hi, Mariah Carey, I'm your biggest fan. We're going to be living together this year. 
Um, and then you can kind of tell them like, hey, I'm thinking about bringing a, a mini fridge and do you want to bring the microwave? Um, so it's a very really easy process to get in contact with them. And as soon as you've gotten in contact with them, you can exchange maybe some easier ways to get in contact, phone, Snapchat, Instagram, um, Facebook, if you're on Facebook groups. So that's just one of the ways that you can get in contact with them. Nate, you're muted. Muted. It's the virtual world we live in. Um, thank you. Um, I'm going to touch on a question that came in quick uh, before I, I pass on to the next. Um, someone asked how they get their information into the self-service center uh, and essentially get into the opportunity to fill out their housing application. So about three days after you, you deposit uh, to the university, you'll get an email with your UHAR email address and your ID number. Uh, with that, there should be some instructions and in using that information uh, to log into your Hawk mail, which is your University of Hartford email address. Uh, once you're in there, you'll have an email waiting for you in your inbox uh, that has an initial pin set up for self-service. Uh, the username for that is just your ID. Um, and there's going to be more instructions in that email as well uh, that you can follow. Once you get into there, um, there's more information from the Center for Student Success. Um, as well as how to access that housing application and get into you know, that self-service portal. So again, step one is completing that deposit to the University of Hartford, uh, and then you know, just enjoying that moment for a couple of days. Uh, once you get the email with your UHART email address and your ID number, uh, that's when the fun starts. So you can log right in, keep your eye on that, um, and really get yourself uh, you know, put in a good position to, to complete your housing application and get the, the assignment you're looking for. Um, again, going back to another question we got in the registration forms, um, Kaylee, I'm going to have you answer this one. Can you talk a little bit about, first off, what an RA is, what a resident advisor is, and what their role is in the housing experience for first-year students? Of course. Um, so an RA is a resident assistant, and on campus, they are upperclassmen, so you can apply to be an RA your sophomore year and continue with that process for your next three years at the university. Um, your RAs live in your residence hall, and they're there really just to help you get acclimated to living on campus. So if you are locked out of your room, if you have roommate issues, if there's uh, noisy neighbors, just really in-house complaints that you have, they're there to help you with that. And they also help with med mediation, sorry. So they do go through about a two to three week training before getting on campus which allows them to be you know, certified in doing all those things. They help with uh, fire alarms and they're really just there to help you. So you're not really looking for a public safety officer living two doors down from you. It is just a regular student um, and they're all very nice. I actually became friends with my RA freshman year. I had class with her. So they're literally all students. They're here to help you. They're not really here to try to get you in trouble. Awesome, thank you, Kalia. Um, this next question I'm going to answer quickly because it's not going to take long. Uh, somebody asked if all housing options have handicap accessibility. Uh, and the quick answer to that is yes. Um, one thing we didn't necessarily see in the CCOMP uh, piece is that there is a ramp outside of that building. Um, Hawk Hall uh, has an elevator inside. So there is access um, to the first year residence halls uh, if anybody has or needs handicap accessibility. Um, Steven, I'm going to have you answer this next one. Uh, somebody wants to know what the bathroom situation is like in the, res in the residence halls. Obviously, we were able to see them in the, in the neighborhoods and the complexes. Um, but if you want to talk a little bit about both the neighborhood restroom situation and the Hawk Hall one, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So um, I guess I'll start in Hawk Hall. Um, Hawk Hall has two bathrooms per floor. Um, one for men's and one for women's. And in those bathrooms, I believe it's four of everything, four sinks, four showers, and four store, maybe three. Um, and so basically that would be a communal bathroom for all of either the men or women on the floor. And, and, um, and that's basically, that's every floor. And then I did not live there, so I cannot really speak to the experience of using those bathrooms. However, I did live in the complexes and on each floor, there would be two bathrooms. Um, for each side of the floor. Um, each floor is either uh, is one gender, so you're not going to have a men's and a women's bathroom. You'll just have um, two bathrooms for each side of the floor. 
And in those bathrooms, you'll have two stalls, two sinks, and two showers. And based on my experience living in the complexes, um, waiting to use like the bathroom or the shower or the sink was not a problem um, because everyone's kind of doing their own thing. So it's not really like everyone's going to always be like waiting to rush into the bathroom um, in the morning to go to class. And then everyone's going to be rushing into the bathroom before they go to sleep. It's very spread out and it's a very um, uh, easy to navigate situation. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Mary, I know you lived in, in Hawk Hall as a first year student and Stephen kind of touched on uh, you know, the experience in the complexes and the, the small community bathrooms. What are the large community bathrooms like? Yeah, so I also never had an issue with the amount of people on the floor versus the bathrooms. Um, I want to say at the most, the amount of people in the bathroom were like maybe two, maybe three. Um, I never had like an issue just whenever I wanted a shower, just walking down there and then just being able to get a shower right there. And that's the same for the laundry situation as well. Um, I never had an issue trying to get um, one of the units whenever I really wanted it. And if you um, do wanna have like a group chat with your floor, um, we had a group chat that was just basically like, hey, is anyone using the laundry right now? Can I use it or can I use it right after you? So it's a, it's a super uh, like not anything to really worry about in that way. And then uh, just to add one more thing, we also do have um, in the communal bathrooms, uh, the school provides uh, the cleaning service for those bathrooms. However, you are expected to not make a mess of those bathrooms. Otherwise, you will uh, have to participate in helping maintain the bathrooms. So um, in the complexes and in Hawk Hall, they do have uh, employees of the school who help clean the bathrooms. Yeah, and, and from my experiences, even just going into the showroom, the students really tend to develop a great relationship with the, the cleaning staff. And um, so you tend to start taking care of it because you respect the people that are around. Um, we have a question here about RLCs and giving an example of the different type of activities that the residential learning communities do and how often. John, I'm going to toss it to you to start, um, and then we might have some others build off of it, depending on how you feel? Oh yeah, so um, RLC. So I believe there are eight. Uh, so um, there's a second, third, fourth, and fifth floor of Hawk Hall. Um, each half of the floor is um, one RLC. So uh, basically they're just different uh, theme or interest. Um, so the way it would work, I believe every week you have a meeting with your RLC along with the RA. Um, and you guys work on things together pertaining to the RLC. So um, I know in years past, community service students would do community service together. Uh, Hawk Spirit students would probably go to the basketball games, the baseball games, any sporting events, anything big um, in terms of uh, uh, school spirit. Uh, so it really just depends on what your interest is, sort of say. If anyone wants to add to that because I personally wasn't in Hong Kong, but. I can add to that and, and kind of what we did in the um, STEM CRLC. And for those who don't know what STEM C is, it's science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, so some of the activities that we did in my freshman year, uh, we went to a technology conference where we looked at real companies um, trying to market their um, products to the uh, greater Hartford area is where we were. Um, we also went down in um, the Raging Hog River, which is the river that runs through campus. Um, and we looked at the biological specimens in the water and I'm an architectural major. So that wasn't super fun for me, but it was awesome for our bio kids. Um, and then something else that we did is we went into the library on campus and took out the um, BR stuff that we have um, and we used it to look how it could be used in the future in um, like the nursing fields. Um, so they really broaden <laughs> your um, uh, mindset on kind of like what STEM C is. Um, so that's just kind of some of the stuff that we did. Awesome. Thank you both for that. Um, I know that the RLCs are, are certainly a, a popular topic of conversation and you know the activities that they do is certainly something that 
um, you know, is a big draw for students who are interested in that space. Um, I saw this question come up in the chat, but it's also next on my list. So um, people want to know what are the fun things to do outside of campus? What, what is there to do in the area? So I'm going to have you each pick one thing that you like to do outside of campus uh, and, and just give a quick overview of it. Sorry to put you all on the spot, but I had to do it. Who wants to go first? I can go first. All right. Uh, so I have a number of things, um, but I think probably my biggest one now that the weather is starting to warm up um, is uh, we have a Talcott Mountain, which is probably about 15 minutes away from here. Um, it's a really, really nice hiking trail um, up 900 and like 20 feet. Um, it's, it's not the worst in the world. It does get pretty steep at times, um, but it's just a a really great hiking spot. Uh, I think it's in like Bloomfield, Simsbury area. So it's really not too far from here. I actually went um, on Sunday, took a mental health day after all these midterms. Uh, so that's probably my uh, favorite spot to go. Um, I'm gonna go next. So nobody takes my answer. Um, I absolutely love Target, so I'm a little bit biased. So I go to Target like every weekend just to walk around. But we have a campus shuttle that takes us to different places. And one of my favorite stops is Blueback Square. Um, there's a bunch of dining areas in there. There's places to shop and there's just places to walk around. If you're anywhere from Connecticut, you know of Milkcraft, that's also in Blueback Square. So it just has a lot to offer there but second would be Target and Bishop's Corner. So we have quite a few different places and our campus shuttle takes you there. So you get the best of both worlds. I can go next. Um, along those lines, my roommates and I really like to go to the mall and kind of walk around and maybe not as much shop, but just kind of vibe there. Um, so also on the um, shuttle, we have the West Farms Mall, um, which is kind of like the, the biggest mall in the area. Um, it's got tons and tons of stores. Um, and then along in that area is also another Target. Um, so if you're a big fan of Target, there's also one over there. Um, but then I guess outside stuff, um, I really like in the fall and in the early spring or the late spring, um, Lake Compounds, which is an amusement park in the area. So there's also that. So I guess I'll go um, a little generic here. But um, the food in the area is quite unbelievable. Um, I know everyone already kind of mentioned the entire shuttle route, but um, in each of those places, there are a ton of different dining options that you and your friends can go to on the weekend or at night if someone has a car and you want to drive out there. Um, they have pretty much everything. So that's always um, a great thing to do with friends is to go out and try different restaurants and everything like that, different coffee shops. Um, but then also, and I've never been here, but I've heard from a lot of people that Elizabeth Park is like a great park to go to on a nice day. Um, and so all of my friends are telling me we're going, so we're going to go soon, but I feel like I should say that here. Awesome. And it's actually a nice little segue, uh, Stephen, to the next question that I had. And so I'm just going to dump it right back on you. Uh, are, are first year students allowed to have their cars on campus? Yes, so first year students are allowed to have their cars on campus. Um, there is enough parking um, and all you have to do is get a parking pass. You could either get it um, for a half a year for a semester. Uh, you could do it a semester at a time or you can do it for a slightly overall cheaper option of buying one pass for the entire year. Um, and all you have to do is remember to keep your car in a parking spot that is for the residential parking permits and you should be good. Thanks, Stephen. Um, we've touched on most of these questions from the, the registration form. So we have a few um, that are coming in uh, to really kind of, you know, start answering the, the live questions here. So uh, John, I'm gonna have you answer this one. Um, can you talk about public safety on campus? Yeah, so um, public safety uh, actually now has, I believe, two, it used to have one office. Now they added a uh, community office um, near the freshman side of campus, and they have one near um, the village quads um, closer to the upperclassmen. So they added another office. Um, 
in case anything ever happens. Um, they're very close by. Uh, they have 24 seven patrol on car foot, uh, bike and golf cart now. Um, and it's pretty secure. Uh, during times like this, uh, nobody can come onto campus unless they're pretty much a student or, or faculty or staff member. Um, and during a regular time, uh, late at night, they really don't allow anybody on campus unless they're a student. Um, so they're always checking IDs at the front. Um, they're not letting anybody on unless it's like an essential service like Uber or you know, food or stuff like that. But other than that, um, they're patrolling campus. Uh, they're controlling the front entrance uh, as best as they can. Awesome. Thank you, John. Uh, Mary, I'm gonna toss this question to you. Can you talk about what appliances are approved on campus? Yeah, sure. So everywhere on the university, you're allowed to bring a mini fridge and a microwave, um, as well as a Keurig. Um, and then there are, as long as you have a full kitchen, you're allowed to bring a toaster. We just don't want students bringing toasters if they are in the dorms or the suite style apartments. I mean, uh, areas they're living um, just based on the university guidelines. Um, but we also have an opportunity where you can rent a refrigerator and microwave combo. Um, so they basically, you fill out all the paperwork and stuff and, and pay for the rental in the beginning of the fall semester. Uh, the university will set it up in your room and they will take it away at the end of the year. Um, so you don't have to worry about buying a microwave or refrigerator if you don't want to. So that's just another um, thing that students can do on campus. Awesome. Thank you, Mary. Um, uh, Kaylee, I'm going to have you come in next um, and answer this question that we have here about uh, what the study rooms are like on campus. So in Hulk Hall, I'm not sure if you got to see the video, but in Hulk Hall, the uh, study room is in the middle of the floor on each resident's uh, hall. So it's right in the middle. It has about two big desks in there, whiteboard spaces, and everything like that. So you're able to go in there, sit in there with your friends, your floor mates. It is pretty much open in a normal semester to everybody um, in the building. And in the neighborhoods, it actually is a bit different because They've renovated it. I want to say it is now two years to game rooms downstairs, study rooms, and um, just very much open space. So when I was a freshman, they were actually pretty much empty rooms, but now they have open spaces. So you have large tables with whiteboards as well. You have um, a game room on the side to go to if you want to do that, take a study break. But they're actually super, super nice. And I mean, not everybody wants to go to the library to study and can't really focus in their room. So it's nice to just maybe go downstairs or go upstairs in your building. So options for you. Thanks, Kalia. Um, Steven, I'm gonna bring you in for this next question we have about bike storage on campus. Is there a place to lock up your bike or? Yes, there are places to lock up your bike. Um, so I do not personally have a bike. However, I do see a lot of bikes around campus. So if you live in the complexes, there are um, bike storage areas outside for your bike. Um, you can lock it up uh, on the rack. Um, and then there are also bike storage places at most places around campus, like the library, um, outside uh, academic buildings, and then I believe um, by the dining hall as well. So um, you should have places to lock up your bike in uh, all areas around campus. Um, and so that is a good thing to have. If you do not want to walk all the way to class, you can ride. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I saw another question before we go into some of the other ones that are, are lingering um, that I think got answered, but I, I want to bring it up for everybody. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing quick and then I'm going to share this this screen. So somebody had asked about the proximity of the first year residence halls to things like the dining commons, uh, the library, and things like that. So to just give everybody kind of a concept of what we viewed tonight, Hawk Hall on this map is number eight, um, also labeled with an HH for convenience. Um, <laughs> C complex, which is where Kalia is, uh, is also part of number eight, um, but it's the C over here to the on the left side of the map. Uh, Mary is joining us from quad three, which uh, over by the nine on the right side of the map, the Q3 there. Um, so that is the space that you were able to see from that. 
So in terms of first year residence halls and their proximity to dining commons. So again, we talked about Hawk Hall being HH and then the C complex being C. Uh, that building number seven, right in between the two of those, those is, that's dining commons. So it's very strategically located right in the middle of all the first year residence hall options um, so that students don't have to you know, worry about having to hike all the way across campus um, to see you know, different things or to get their food um, in terms of the library. So again, if we're looking at Hawk Hall and the HH, if you cross that bridge just below HH and go to building 15, that is where the library is. Um, so again, very close, very convenient. And then if we scroll down on this map a little bit more, this is all of the academic side of campus. We're just focusing on this portion of the, uh, the residential side. So just to give you guys kind of that piece uh, of an understanding of where we are and how close everything is for students, um, you know, that's, that's key. All right, um, who wants to answer the next question? All right, Kalia, uh, what happens if you really dislike your roommate? Um, well, let me start by saying I liked my roommate. We got along, so we were all good. But like I mentioned earlier with the RAs, they do go through training for mediation purposes. So they will come to you guys, have you sit down and have conversations, really discuss what the issue is. If it is something that is unbearable, they will put you in the process of getting a new room or a room change. Um, sorry about that. I guess I haven't moved in a while, but if you guys, it's something that needs to be changed in this very moment, they will make sure to have make sure to have it happen. Res Life is really on top of that because they do understand that you may not always get along with your roommate, especially if it is somebody random. But yeah, they're they're pretty good with that. Awesome. Um, and then Phoenix wants to know how cafeteria options are for vegetarian students. Does anybody want to speak to that? Don't all jump at once. I mean, I'm not a vegetarian. However, I can speak to the options that I witness as an outsider to that um, sort of diet. Basically, um, at every meal in commons, there's a salad bar. In the morning, obviously, that would be a little more fruit based. Um, and in the afternoon and evening, that would be more salad, lettuce, spinach and all sorts of things like that. Um, and they have all sorts of vegetables that you can add to those salads. We have a vegan station inside Commons, which is not going to have any dairy or meat involved in those meals. And then there are also options um, at the other stations around Commons, but those are not guaranteed to be um, vegan or, or uh, vegetarian um, because those will be coming in contact with um, other sorts of things that you probably don't want to eat. Um, and then uh, the other dining options on campus, um, we have uh, the uh, student union, which has um, many dining options. There's also salad there. Um, and there are vegan and vegetarian options at, um, I believe, all of those locations. And then at the Hawk's Nest, which is below Commons, they also have vegetarian options for vegetarian students um, there. And then at Subway also, there are other um, vegetarian options um, for vegetarian students. So there's always a way to find food. Um, and then in addition to that, the, um, the common staff and like the Aramark staff in general, they are the ones who provide all of the food for campus. Take it, take um, you being able to get what you want very personally. And so um, if there is something that you don't want, or if there is a complaint about something, um, they're always willing to listen. And so I can just say um, a few weeks ago, I was sitting in commons and I had uh, something that I wasn't particularly a fan of. And I said, oh, that was a little weird. And um, one of the directors was walking by and he dropped everything he was doing, um, asked me what was wrong. And I explained to him what it was, blah, blah, blah. He goes into the kitchen. He comes back with you know a whole other order of it made in the right way. He had a whole explanation. He you know, did all of this stuff just to make sure that we were all happy with what we were eating. Um, he took our trash away. He asked about the service in general. So, I mean, it's very um, a personal experience for them and they take it very seriously. So, um, yeah. I just wanted to add to that real quick, Nate. There is a vegan and vegetarian council. I think that was enacted about three or four years ago. 
and they taste test the food that they bring into commons. So if you want to join that, you absolutely get that. Um, but they really have, like they sit down and have weekly meetings, I believe it is, to really talk about what options they can bring into campus. Read my mind. That was coming up out of, out of my mouth next. So um, someone's asking about the game rooms in the basements of the, the neighborhoods. Who wants to uh, touch on what those look like now that they've been renovated and upgraded? Come on in, Kalia. Um, so Stephen and I are actually overnight hosts, so we've taken a, quite a few students down there. So we haven't got to experience living in it, but we've played uh, down there. So you have some Xboxes down there, some PS4s, I think, uh, Wii's. Our favorite game to play is Mario Kart. Uh, so we absolutely love that, but it is very spacious. You can have movie nights down there. They have TVs. You can sign into your Netflix account, your Hulu account. Of course, make sure to sign out before you leave, but you have that option to do that. But they're very, very nice down there. And it's something that I absolutely wish we had, but it's always great that the university is updating. Yeah, they're all carpeted. They have all sorts of comfy chairs. Um, they also have pool table, ping pong, all of that good stuff, or um, uh, foosball, um, all of those sorts of things. So you go down there, I'm sure there's going to be other people from your building, and um, you'll be able to sit and have a good time. And I don't think they close, so you might be able to hang out there all through the night if you must. All right. Let's see. I think there was another one that I saw. Um, it looks like questions are starting to to quiet down a little. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out a, another call for questions. Um, I know a lot of our questions that we have lingering here are being answered uh, via the the staff in the background. Um, so again, feel free to throw out any questions while we're waiting. Um, as any of of the four of you who have done events with me know, I like to throw out curveball questions. Um, so tonight's curveball question is going to be, can you tell us about one like landscape feature of campus that's so unique um, that you really enjoy at UHart? Go ahead, Kalia. I absolutely love talking about this. So if you ever visited campus or ever will visit campus, there is a bridge right in the middle that separates the academic and the residential side. Um, it's right in the middle. It's absolutely beautiful in the fall, the beginning of fall and end of spring when of course there's some leaves on it and stuff. Um, it kind of looks like Nate's background with the pink flowers and stuff around there. Um, you'll see people under there playing with the Frisbees, uh, doing having picnics, laying out on their hammocks. And I act, actually lived in the residence hall that was literally facing the bridge. So I always tell the tours this, I have a million pictures of what it looks like out there, whether it was snowing or the leaves were falling, but that's my favorite part. I could go next. Um, so something that I really like and that we kind of got to see with my apartment tour was the inside of the quad um, surrounding all of the different quads. Um, so it's this, big, massive green, um, and we have tons and tons of activities here. Um, so just to name one of those, um, we have um, movie nights with a big inflatable um, movie screen. Um, in the fall semester, they gave us all um, little picnic blankets so that we were able to social distance on, on the grass. Um, and then we also have massive bingo games out there. Um, and they're like a super big thing for everyone to go to um, at the university. So there's tons of fun prizes and it's free. So why not go? <laughs> I guess I'll go next. Um, so there are a lot of different places on campus um, where you can go outside. I personally have been spending pretty much most of every day for the last few days in front of the library. Um, and that is where pretty much like you can't see it, but the library has like a bunch of different pillars all throughout the quad over there. And everyone kind of takes a pillar um, and sits, relax, does homework. There's people everywhere just kind of sitting spaced out. People will bring their picnic blankets over there. Um, on the other side, well, actually not anymore because there's construction there right now, but there used to be like a set of stairs in the back where people would sit on like the other side of the quad. And so that's just like a great place during the day um, and kind of into the evening sometimes where a lot of people will be sitting doing homework. Um, 
we've been throwing the frisbee around uh, for the last three days, pretty much nonstop because it's just been so beautiful out. Um, and then if you stay there late enough or really anywhere on campus, some of the sunsets that you'll see are pretty, um, pretty wild. Uh, definitely there's a lot of open sky area. So you'll be able to see um, quite the few sunsets while you're here. Um, and then just another landscape type thing that I think is very cool um, or meaningful. If you looked at the picture on the front of this slideshow um, right now, you can't actually see them, um, but there were six trees lined up along the path um, on, in that picture. And those uh, were in honor of 9-11 victims um, who went to our school or who were associated with our school. So these trees over here on the way to Dana Hall, um, and that's right by the library as well, um, from the library to one of our other academic buildings. So those are just nice because they mean a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, and they're beautiful, as you can see. So those are my outdoor places. Well, uh, Mary and Steven, you guys took my top two, um, but I'll go with what I got after that. Um, so on the uh, uh, residential side, uh, we have Alumni Plaza, which is another place where a lot of students hang out. Um, it's literally right uh, between uh, the dining hall and uh, Hall Hall. Um, and a lot of students also hang out there as well. Um, there's also some Frisbees um, thrown around, footballs. Um, during nice days, uh, students eat outside, study outside on the benches there. Um, and, and I think also around the corner from there is also our fire pit, uh, which is literally right outside where Kaylee is, um, which is uh, a new addition to um, our campus. I think, um, I wanna say it was either last year or the year before, um, where students can hang out uh, near the fire pit. I'm pretty sure it's turned on every night almost. Um, unless it's like really, really freezing cold. Um, so anywhere around uh, Alumni Plaza and the fire pit, right around the commons is, is a great place. Awesome, thank you all for those. Um, I'm gonna use that as a nice little segue into promoting another one of our Living at Uhart events um, coming in uh, early May. Uh, actually, it's April 27th. Um, we're hosting a hot spots on campus Event. So students, Red Keys and, and students alike will be checking in from, you know, their various favorite places on campus um, that students like to, to spend time. Um, and so, you know, hopefully some of these will be featured in that and you guys can get a good look at, you know, things like that fire pit and the bridge um, to really give you an idea of, of what makes our so special. Um, we've got a few more questions here. Um, Steven, do you mind talking a little bit about uh, kosher food options in the resident or in dining? Yes, I can. Um, so we have a kosher kitchen uh, in the commons um, run by a guy named Adam. He's pretty cool. Um, and basically they have their own self-contained kitchen. So there's going to be no um, mixing of pots and pans um, or anything like that from the rest of the commons. Everything is cooked in there. Um, it is a meat kitchen, so there's going to be no dairy food cooked in there. So um, it is only open um, during lunch and dinner. Um, and there you can get a, a home style meal um, for the most part. It seems um, that a lot of people love the food from the kosher kitchen. So um, you do not have to be kosher to eat from the kosher kitchen. And it is a very popular um, place to go. Um, I personally love the French fries there. Um, they are great. And, um, and so they've got like a lot of like good stuff, um, for anyone really, um, meat options. Uh, you, you can get uh, vegetarian style, um, options there. It's becoming more and more expanded, um, as time goes on. Um, so I do know a few people who eat only kosher, but they are also vegetarians. Um, so they can go there and get either a vegan type thing or a vegetarian style option. Um, and then just in general, um, we also have a lot of kosher marked options um, in the campus market. Um, so you can also go there for kosher food. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Steven. 
Uh, Mary, I'm going to have you come in. Someone wants to know about what precautions and what steps uh, Commons takes for students with food allergies. Yeah, so for students with food allergies, um, you're most likely going to be getting access to the Live Safe Pantry. And so what the Live Safe Pantry is, is it's a separate room within the Commons um, where only certain students have access to it. Um, and it doesn't have any um, like gluten. Um, the dairy items are kept separately um, if they're like non-dairy. Um, so you'll get access to that portion there. Um, but then it also um, we have at our different stations in the commons, you can always go up to the chefs and request the, like, hey, um, like I'm not, I'm not like really allergic to this, but like, hey, I'm mildly allergic to lettuce. Can you please make this with using separate gloves and don't include any lettuce and um, they are super, super accommodating. Like, like they, we said before, they will drop everything to make sure that you are satisfied with your meal. They are phenomenal. And Marcus is very, very good in that, in that regard. Thank you, Mary. Kaylee, I'm coming to you. You look, uh, you look like you could use a question. So um, what are some of the campus activities for freshmen in addition to clubs and orgs on campus? Um, and what is there to do on weekends? Um, so I guess I'll start this off with mentioning the clubs that we do have. So we have over 100 different clubs and organizations that you can get involved in, cultural, political, social, pretty much anything you can find. And if you can't find it, you can start your own. So that's always a good thing. Um, so outside of those clubs, our campus activities team, they put on events pretty much every weekend. So like Mary mentioned, we have bingo nights. Um, Enacted last semester, we now have food trucks every Friday and Saturday on campus. So it's like a full food truck, food truck on Friday. And on Saturday, it's called Sweet Saturdays. So it might be dessert. So Ben and Jerry's milk craft. Um, we've also in the past have silent discos parties, which are one of my favorite things to go to. Um, and we have a ton of events. I know um, Halloween this past semester, the Halloween this past semester, since we had to be a little bit social distant, uh, the Residence Hall Association put on a bit of like a party in Alumni Plaza outside. So it was like a social event. So there are a ton of different things to do on campus. Um, if you're looking for something, you will absolutely find it. And it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, as far as off campus, like I mentioned about the shuttle, it, it takes you to the three different stops. It actually takes you to four stops. Most people don't know it takes you to the art store on Sundays. So that's also pretty cool. So Bishop's Corner, Blueback Square, the art store, and then the mall. And then they also have a recreational shuttle now that takes you to Elizabeth Park, Talcott Mountain. Um, I actually did the Talcott Mountain hike that John was talking about in the beginning of the fall semester. So you can go off campus and do that. My friends and I love to go to the movies as well. It's in Blueback Square. So our campus is literally located 10 minutes away from all of these things and downtown Hartford. Although the campus shuttle doesn't take you there, you can hop in an Uber or if you bring your car, there's a bunch of restaurants and stuff to eat out there. There's Bushnell Park. I love walking through there. There's a lot to do around um, our campus in a nutshell. So definitely check those out. And I would recommend the food, like Steven said, a lot of good options and a lot of Italian places around here, guys. I love the pasta, it's, it's good. Awesome, thanks Kalia. Um, so we got a nice wholesome question here that I think we're going to end on. So uh, we're going to go uh, ladies first. We'll start with Mary uh, and then we'll go Kalia, John and Stephen. Uh, but why was it that you chose to attend the University of Hartford? What was it that made you decide to come here? So something that really like drew me to the university was in my senior year, I think I went on eight or nine tours in the just the spring semester going in, going in. I was, I was crazy. Like I didn't have to go that much, but every single time I came, I felt that all the professors really wanted me to succeed. Like I would talk, I talked with the, the Dean of the architecture department and he gave me all of this information that I hadn't asked, but he knew I needed. And since coming to the university that has just kept up my professors make sure that I'm where I need to be. Like if I ever need any extra help, I can always go to them in their office hours. So the professors really just make it, make 
you feel like you are the only student, even though they have all these other students. So I really say our, our, our professors are pretty phenomenal in, in what they're, they're doing here. So yeah, that's kind of why I went here. Um, I have kind of a different path coming to the university. Um, I initially visited the university about three different times for an open house and admitted students day and as a recruit uh, for track. And each time I visited the campus, like Mary said, it was, you just got that feeling. Like it was very nice. The campus looked beautiful. Like I said, the bridge, I just loved it when I first came here and I still love it to this day. Um, but when I came into the university, I was originally a physical therapy student and there's an amazing four plus three and three plus three program here at the university. So that was really my intent in coming in. But I also knew that I was not necessarily set on PT. So being that I wasn't set on PT, I wanted to be able to go to a university that their academics were all around good. So if I decided to switch my major, which I have, I would still be you know, somewhere that I'm excelling. And with all the opportunities I've gotten from switching out of PT into marketing, even though it's a bit of a change, I definitely can say I made the right decision. And the PT program is absolutely amazing. I still have friends in there. It just wasn't the right fit for me. So knowing that, this campus pretty much had everything that I was looking for. It was an open campus, super welcoming people. And then the academics, which is what, you know, college is for, was just like A plus, made the decision pretty easy. Um, so I had a, I have a lot of reasons that I chose the University of Hartford. Um, but I think the biggest thing was um, it's a smaller school. Um, and I needed a smaller university to attend. Um, I couldn't really see myself going into a bigger university in a big lecture hall with, you know, 300, 200, 300 students. Um, we mentioned the professors. The professors really want to teach. Uh, they really want to help students. I think professors come to the University of Hartford because they want to be able to interact with students more um, because of our small class sizes and our various majors. Um, that was really the biggest thing. Um, I saw how connected uh, the university was, the community. Um, you know, we accept you if you respect others, others will respect you. Um, that's really what we preach here. Um, and it's not too far from home for me because I'm from New York and, uh, and it's, it's not too close either. So, um, but there is a lot um, I could go on about, but I think the biggest thing of course um, is academics because um, that comes first and, and the professors are top notch and the classes are smaller compared to bigger universities. So um, the first time I came to this campus was about six or seven years ago. Um, I'm a senior now, so it's not like totally crazy, but it is a little crazy because I've always been ready to go to school um, or to at least go away from home. And, uh, and so the first time we came here was a random weekend um, in June. So there was literally no one on campus because school had already finished for the year, um, for the academic year. And, um, and so my mom was just like, let's just go. So I went up toward the school, just a very basic tour of um, you know, the campus and whatever. Not everything was open because obviously the school is closed. So we didn't really go inside a whole lot, but we just saw everything. Um, and we got in the car and she said, so what do you think? And I said, yeah, okay, this is where I'm going to go to school. I was a sophomore in high school. So I just was way premature, but I just knew that this is where I was going to go. Um, and so from there, I made my parents take me up, um, a few times. Um, and you know, this is before all of the construction projects, um, that we either have now, obviously, or way before that we've had a lot of construction done at the campus um, and none of that had started yet but I just knew that this is where I was going to go um, and then from there we started learning about all of the things that are offered how um, you know all of the class sizes are basically the size of a high school class regularly um, you know except for a few exceptions but um, I wasn't the best student in high school so um, I definitely wasn't into the idea of just going into a lecture hall with about 300, 400 people, um, or even 50 people. But um, so the class sizes were really small. The programs are all very supportive of all the students' needs. Um, the professors are very attentive. And then just in general, the people, um, you can kind of tell who goes to this school and who doesn't because there's like 
just that kind of bring to the person who goes here. Um, they're all very into the community. They're into, you know, the school. Um, and so um, it's just a great place to just kind of be around people. Um, and so that's why I went here. That's why I like this place. And I can say that I would not really change any of it um, from the past four years. Awesome. Thank you all for, for those nice sentimental pieces of, of, uh, of ending here. This is it's a great way to, to kind of go out. So uh, with no further ado, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Um, if you have any questions that uh, you'd still like answered, feel free to type them out in the Q&A. We can, we can type some answers in there for you. Um, I also want to point out the, the link on our slide here to the housing page. If anybody wants to find out some more information about dimensions of rooms and things like that, um, get some ideas for how to decorate your room, maybe feel free to uh, check out that link um, and also our admission email address. So feel free to send us any questions um, that didn't get answered tonight. Um, if there's anything we can do to kind of help you out through the process um, and keep your eye out on some of the uh, some more of the events and, and as they come up, uh, hopefully we'll continue to see you at these these events and then again on campus in the fall. So thanks again, everybody. Thank you, Mary, Stephen, Kalia, John. Uh, it was great to have you guys and, and be able to show the, the student perspective as well. So have a good night, everybody.